Okay, everyone, I thought with egg prices on the rise and harder to find, I would come up with a sandwich bread that doesn't require any eggs. And technically, this is a vegan recipe because no eggs, no milk, no butter. So I wanted to show you how to do this with fresh milled flour. And I used half hard white wheat and half hard red wheat. So come with me and I'll show you what I do. Okay, so first we're going to start out milling our flour and I'm going to melt two and a half cups of wheat berries. Here I used half hard red wheat and half hard white wheat. You could use one or the other or mix different combinations of all the grains. It's going to give us about three and a half to four cups of milled flour. And I'm going to use my stand mixer here and put in my kneading paddle here. I went ahead and warmed up the water. I want it to where I can put my finger in it still and it's not gonna burn my finger, but it's pretty warm to the touch. So about 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit is about perfect. And I use one and three quarter cup of water. And I will put a link to this recipe in the description box below. And that way you can check that out and print it off for your records. To the warm water, I'm going to add three tablespoons of sugar. Now you could use honey here if you want. Or you could omit the sugar altogether. I just think it gives it a little bit of a sweetness since we're not using any dairy or any milk. And then we're also going to do three tablespoons of oil. And I like to use this extra light, extra virgin olive oil. One, two, three. And then I'm going to use one and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And I like to use sea salt. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix that all till it's a little bit combined. All right, and then this is the flour that we milled earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. Now, I know that this recipe works for me with this exact amount of flour, so I can go ahead and dump the whole amount in. Um, if you are trying this recipe out for the first time, I'd recommend that you not put it all in at once. That way you can make sure that if yours needs more or less of the flour than my recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start mixing these ingredients together. So I want you to notice the texture of this dough. At this point, it's very gloppy and gloopy. Obviously, I haven't put the yeast in yet, and the fresh milled flour hasn't had time to absorb all of the liquid and the develop, and the gluten hasn't started to develop yet. Now, I have seen some people in videos go ahead and let this rise at this stage, and I feel like that's a big mistake because you're missing out on that pillowy, airy, textured bread that we like, that we get basically from the stores. So this will make a very dense and heavy bread if I stop kneading at this point. But what I am going to do is cover this with some cling film and let it sit for about 15 minutes. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and cover it with the hook inside. Let it sit for about 15 minutes before I even put my yeast in. And this will allow everything to start absorbing the liquid, I'm having trouble with my cling rack here. <laughs> and um, that way it will be ready to go for us to add our yeast and it will knead in a lot better. So let me let this sit for 15 minutes and I'll be right back with you. Okay, now that it has been about 15 minutes, I'm gonna set that cling film to the side because I'll probably go ahead and use it again. So you can already see a little bit of stretchiness coming just from waiting with the time. Um, obviously it's still not ready yet. I'm going to go ahead and put this down and start mixing. And as I start mixing, I'm going to add my yeast. I like to use the instant yeast. That way I don't have to prepare it beforehand. So, or the bread maker yeast, it's called different things in different places, I think. So let me go ahead and start mixing that. And then I'll add the yeast in. going to be two teaspoons of the yeast.
And as you can see, it's already starting to pick up all of the dried flour from the sides of the bowl. So I'm gonna let this just go ahead and knead and continue to knead. And I'll just check back with you to show you how it looks here in a little bit. Okay, I set a timer and we're on five minutes of kneading. Some people would stop here, but I'm gonna show you where we're at and we'll keep going here. It is very still sticky. I like my bread dough on the sticky side, but it does have some stretch, but you can see it breaks pretty easily. I'm not getting a window pane test here, but it does have some gluten development. So I'm going to keep kneading at this stage and I'll set a timer for five more minutes and show you where we're at in 10 minutes. Okay, now it's been going for five more minutes, so we're at a total of 10 minutes. And it is more stretchy. Sometimes this just comes out on me. And it's still sticky to my fingers. You can see it's still wanting to be on my fingers, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be completely dry, but I'm getting more stretch and it wants to start to do a window pane but as you can see it's still ripping oh let me show you better sorry as you can see it's still ripping as i pull that apart i hope you can see that okay still sticky it's okay i'm not adding any extra flour at this point because i know as this dough gets worked with it will become drier and more cohesive and by the time it raises and I go to shape it, it will be the perfect consistency that I'm looking for. So now that I made a big mess, let me go ahead and let it go for five more minutes and I will show you at 15 minutes. Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. Okay, it's been 15 minutes now. Friends, I'm telling you, it's okay to go longer than the five minutes or whatever that your recipe tells you to need because you really want to make sure that you get the texture that you want because you want to eat the bread that tastes good to you. So, 15 minutes. You can see the stretchiness of it. It's wanting, it's wanting to be ready, but I'm still getting ripping. See this? I hope you can see this. Okay, so I'm still gonna let it go for another five minutes, which will now be a total after that's done of 20 minutes of kneading. So I always just allow myself time and try not to rush the process. That way that I know that I'm getting the texture of bread that I really want. So let's go for five more minutes. I just wanna say real quick while this is going, if you have one of the nice mixers, like the bigger Bosch or the Ank, then you may have a less kneading time. If you have this mixer or even a KitchenAid mixer, it may take even longer than this one takes to get the window pane. My old KitchenAid mixer took sometimes a half an hour for me to get the window pane test of the consistency that I really wanted. So switching to this was really nice because I generally get it somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes. Also, if you put too much flour in this at the beginning and your dough is very dry, it will basically never come to a full window pane because your dough is too dry. So if it's not just a little bit sticky at this stage and it's just really dry and just kind of going around like this on your paddle, you probably need to add some moisture or some liquid into your dough. Okay, we're at 20 minutes. Now this is when I start getting close. It's usually somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes for me with my area and my wheat berries and my mixer. It may be very different for you. That's why this test is really a good test to, that, that's why this test is really a good test to check for. It's a no, no fail for any area or any wheat berry. So I can already tell it's not gonna be ready, but I wanna show you. We almost get that window pane. It almost doesn't rip, but it still rips. So five more minutes it is. I'm gonna check on it in between and I'll let you know if we go less than five minutes, 
but I'm going to go ahead and go for five more minutes and I'll let you know how long it takes. Okay, we're at 25 minutes. Okay. Let's see where we're at. I'm not sure that we're ready. Okay, so at this point, I can pretty much almost get a window pane test. This dough would probably be fine if I stopped it right here, but I really want the perfect <laughs> texture. My family really likes it light and airy and soft bread, so I'm going to go ahead and knead it longer. This probably would be okay to go ahead and spray and cover and let it go into its first rise. I'm gonna go ahead and give my little mixer here a workout because right after this, I'm actually gonna be making some pizza dough and it probably will need to knead for the same amount of time. So, we're putting it to the test today. Okay, I went ahead and took the time to go those last five minutes. So, I think that makes us up to 30 minutes now. But, I can see in this dough that it is much smoother I will bring it, see if I can bring it up here to you. Much smoother of a dough. So still sticky, okay, but it's smooth. So here's my stretchy. I get my window pane test. There's a little breakage up here, but I can see how thin this is. I don't know if you can see my finger through here, but we're getting awfully thin. So I'm happy with this. You can see the whole gob is just very stretchy without tearing and ripping. So I'm going to go ahead, just push this to the side here. Okay, so I added nothing to this, but I gave it time. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray just a little coating of oil so it doesn't stick to my cling film. And then I'm just gonna grab that one we used earlier and I'm going to put this on the top. So my initial weight, if I would have let it wait a longer than the 15 minutes, my kneading time may have even been less than this. So I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for about one to two hours or until my dough has doubled and it will continue to work on developing gluten even as it's sitting. So time is one of the best things that helps gluten to start to form. So that's the best way to describe it, I guess. So I'm gonna set this aside, give it one to two hours, and I will come back. Okay, and since I mentioned I wanted to make pizza dough after this, while this is doing its first rise, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of this bowl so I can use this bowl to make my pizza dough. I already have my flour milled for that, and. I'm going to probably make a video on that for you, so I'll watch for that to come up in the future, but I'm going to go ahead and transfer this into another bowl. That way I can use this bowl at the same time. Okay, and here's the dough. I just moved it into the bowl that I went ahead and milled, and because I'm using the other bowl for pizza dough here, and I, I love spending time in the kitchen, but if I can double up my time while I'm here and I'm not wasting any time, I like to do that. Just gonna set that aside and then I'll probably go ahead and start my pizza dough. And this was our last week in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. There was their balloon festival and Matt and Haley got to crew and work at the balloon festival. Like They had a lot of fun, even though they didn't get to fly very much because there were a lot of high winds, but they still had a great time and there still was some really cool shapes. Okay, so I like to put a little bit of olive oil on my table. You could use the spray kind if you want, but I think that that helps uh, with the bread easier for me. So I'm just gonna co coat my table. And I'm actually gonna coat the backs of my hands so I can punch my dough down. Kinda love that. <laughs> one of those satisfying things about working with dough and bread. Okay, I'm gonna set that to the side and just continue to put oil on my table. 
And this recipe made enough for two of these smaller eight by, oh, uh, well, four by eight, <laughs> sorry, four by eight loaf pans. And I like to just put a little bit of parchment paper in there. So I'm just gonna kind of put this in a ball so I can cut it in half with my little bench scraper here. Just put a little oil on that. And I just eyeball it. Of course, you could weigh it if you want it to be exact. Actually, I can tell this one's a little smaller, so I'll just add a little dough to that. Okay. And what I'm going to do is flatten this out with my hands. You could use a rolling pin if you want. But this is all stuck to my fingers from when I punched it down. I didn't get a good olive oil on my hands, apparently. Anyway, that's okay. It's just dough. You could use flour here, but I find that it sometimes makes your dough even drier. So I just want to push all the air bubbles out and flatten it. Actually smells really good for being a dough without any enriched ingredients in it. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of fold it up here. This is just how I like to shape dough. There's so many different ways, but you just want to make sure that you have some tension with it. So I just give it a little pull. You can see how it's stretching here as I'm pulling it in. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of a push all the ends down under. Okay. And I'm just going to put that one in my loaf pan. And we're going to do the same with the second piece. Getting all the air bubbles out because on my second rise, it's going to get all new air bubbles back in it. Don't forget to check out my Facebook page. I post all of my recipes and my videos there so you won't miss any. And make sure when you're subscribing to click that little bell down there at the bottom. That way you will get notified when I have new content come out. And I'm just gonna shape the second row, <laughs> the second loaf. The same way, just giving a little pull here. And you can shape the loaf however you want to do. You just want to make sure that this outside part is fairly tight. That just helps make your loaf come out really nice. Okay. I'm going to put that one in the loaf pan and then I'm going to cover these. See if this will fit here. And I'm going to let them rise for about 30 to 40 minutes until they're about double, and then we will bake them. And these loaves are going to bake for, I like to bake them at 400 degree Fahrenheit oven. Um, some other people like to, to bake them at a lower amount, but that's just kind of how I like to do it. So 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 minutes. Okay, so it's risen for about 40 minutes and you can see that the loaves have come up this one has a little bit less in it than the other, but they've almost filled the pan and I'm gonna go ahead and bake those. I like to put the parchment paper on here because it makes little handles so I can pull this out of the bread tin right away. And I don't burn myself. So these are ready to be rested and then we can cut into them as soon as they cool. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to watch this movie about my eggless sandwich bread. I hope it helps your grocery budget in any way. If this can help even save a few pennies, I love to hear that. So 
We're going to enjoy some sandwich bread right now and have some either peanut butter and jellies for some of us and tomato BLTs for others. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my blog at grainsandsmallplaces.net where you can find this recipe and a whole bunch of other recipes all with fresh milled wheat. So thank you so much for stopping by Grains and Small Places. Goodbye. Goodbye.